Oh my god, I'm on the way to the tube station to go to the cinema to see Infinity War. I'm on the tube to the cinema to go to Infinity War. Going into Infinity War. I'm in the cinema now. And just like that, it was over. What just happened? I've got to go see it again. Oh my god, I'm on the... How are you doing? I'm still at a loss for words. I've tried writing a review, but there are so many good things about this film, and there really aren't that many bad things about Not it. Not enough Captain America, maybe? That's my only real criticism, and the only way they could have fixed that was by making it longer and adding more Captain America scenes in, which I don't even think would have improved the film. So instead of reviewing the film, I'm just gonna list my top 25 things about Infinity War. Yes, 25. It's that good. So spoilers. Obviously. Number 25, The Return of Red Skull. I'm purely including this because I wasn't expecting it. And a film having a good shock factor and an unexpected cameo from a character from the first film in the 19 chronological film series and the latest film in the 19 chronological film series is what I live for. Also, the Captain America trilogy is my favorite trilogy in the MCU because, well, The Winter Soldier. That's a great film. So on to number 24, Tyrion Lannister was in the film. He's actually playing a character called Yet. Yet tree. If you know what I mean. Peter Dinklage is a great actor, and I had no idea he was gonna be in this film. Also, I thought it was hilarious they made him a giant dwarf. And Atree makes the list because I liked his character and he produced one of the funniest lines in the entire film. Yes. That's what killing you means. At number 23, I've got the opening fight sequence in New York. I couldn't not include this. Despite there being a lot of action scenes in the film, and this one probably being the most forgettable because it was right at the start. It was still great. Iron Man, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and Wong versus Squidward. I have no idea what his name is. He's genuinely called Squidward to me. And honestly, he was quite powerful, so with the help of the big bulky strong guy, who I also don't know the name of, it was a pretty even and good fight. Eventually ending an hour later with Iron Man, Spider-Man, and the Cloak of Levitation taking out Squidward on his Flying donut. I really need to learn some technical terms if I want to get taken seriously. Number 22, Drax. Just being Drax. What are you doing? Oh, I'm imagining being with you physically. Drax is my favorite Guardian of the Galaxy, and yet again, he was hilarious in this film. Since Guardians of the Galaxy 2, he's mastered the art of standing perfectly still so he's invisible to the human eye. And when everyone else was inconsiderately wondering where and who Gamora was, he was the only one wondering, why is Gamora? <laughs> I just think Drax is hilarious and deserves a mention. I was sad to see him die. Leading us on to number 21, the end credit scene. You know, because Marvel have been kind of mugging us off with the end credit scenes recently. The Spider-Man homecoming scene in particular. Sometimes patience is the key to victory. Sometimes it leads to very little, and it seems like it's not worth it. But in Infinity War, we actually get a good end credit scene, killing off Robin Shabotsky and Samuel L. Jackson and teasing Captain Marvel. And with all the unanswered questions after this film, you know we're gonna go. Which gets us to the top 20, opening with number 20, Captain America and Iron Man don't team up. And I know, this is a really weird thing to like about the film. Surely it should be the opposite, right? But no, this is genuinely something I thought was really good. Because before the film, looking at the trailers, I just thought they were gonna put their feelings towards each other aside, disregarding everything that happened in Civil War. And since Civil War is one of my favorite Marvel films, I didn't want to see it just become an irrelevant filler. A cool one, but still. But that doesn't happen. Civil War remains relevant. Iron Man and Cap don't team up, inevitably probably being the reason they don't win in the end. Number 19, Doctor Strange, Iron Man and Spider-Man versus Star-Lord, Drax and Mantis. Not a fight scene I was expecting, but definitely not a fight scene I'd want the film to get rid of. This turned into an awesome 3v3 fight with them all thinking they were fighting Thanos' servants. And it was just awesome. But it somehow got even better when they realized they were all on the same side and it just produced some of the funniest moments in the film. And while we're talking about fight scenes, we can't forget number 18, Hulk versus Thanos. Because while we unfortunately only got one Hulk scene in the film, I think that one scene was enough. It perfectly does its job of revealing just how powerful Thanos was right from the start. Albeit with an Infinity Stone, but it was still totally wicked. Number 17. Somehow, in a film with over 40 important characters, no character felt forced in. Yeah, they managed to seamlessly transition everyone in. Captain America's entrance was my personal favourite, but they were all pretty good. I love the fact they played the musical themes of every character when they were first introduced. For example, the Guardians all singing along to Rubber Band Band by the spinners in their spaceship. there was the tribal music playing with the introduction of Black Panther in Wakanda. It was all just really well done and it impressed me. And number 16, I've got Tom Holland. Just Tom Holland. He was so great. Best Spider-Man ever. He was funny. He's still making great pop culture references. He was so proud of himself when Iron Man pronounced him an Avenger and his death. You know what? I'll get back to that. I just feel like Tom Holland was made to be Spider-Man. He did a great job with both humour and emotional scenes. So if you're watching Tom, 
Keep up the good work. He's probably not watching. At number 15, I've got the fact we finally got to see some of Gamora's backstory. Because somehow, despite Gamora being an essential character in Guardians of the Galaxy, no screen time has been dedicated to her backstory as of yet. But fortunately, in this film, we got some insight. We watched her first meeting with Thanos, we see how he took a liking to her almost immediately, and explained balance to her while killing her family and her entire planet. It was a very powerful scene and I liked it. And while we're talking about Thanos, how good a villain was he? Because that's number 14. All too often in films you have a villain who just wants to take over the world just because they do. But Infinity War reveals that Thanos grew up on a planet where everyone died out because there was only a finite number of supplies and not enough to sustain the planet. And it explains how he thought this was a problem all over the universe and thought it was the right and merciful thing to do to kill off half the universe's population for the benefit of the rest. And it was a plan that despite being all you could see why it made sense from Thanos' perspective. He found out he had a heart and had to make the greatest sacrifice to achieve what he wanted, cementing his place as the greatest Marvel villain yet. And Thanos was by no means the only person who had to make a sacrifice. There were sacrifices galore in this film. And that's number 13. The film was filled with all sorts of emotional heart tearing out of your body moments by making you watch character crisis after character crisis. Loki sacrificing his brother Thor but cowarding out. Star-Lord sacrificing his girlfriend Gamora but being tricked by Thanos and bubbles coming out of his gun, and Scarlet Witch having to sacrifice Vision, but again, she was tricked by Thanos and he turned back time and it was all rendered useless. Was it over years? Maybe. Did it help make the film the incredible emotional roller coaster it was? Definitely. Which is partly why I think the film will age well, and that's number 12. Because it is so rare for a Marvel film to age well. They're usually so good to watch the first time, but once you've watched it a few more times, you realise they're never as good as they were upon first viewing. This film, on the other hand, stands out from the crowd and was just as thrilling the first time as it was the third time. I still get goosebumps just thinking about the end. I would genuinely describe it as a cinematic masterpiece and think it will go down as one of the all-time great films. Which leads us on to number 11. Thanos killing off Loki and Heimdall in the first 10 minutes. Again, not a standout event a lot of people would like about the film because they are two characters people generally like. But you know what? It set a tone for the film and said right from the start that Thanos means business. And in turn, this film's gonna be intense. And I think it's really important the film started this way because otherwise the later risks they took wouldn't have worked. It started the film off right and that's number 11. On to the top 10. Led by number 10, Thanos' fight scene on Titan with Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Star-Lord, Drax and Mantis. And then Nebula as well, I guess. Firstly, this was a really well-crafted fight scene and it shows how good the film is that it's only number 10. There are moments when you thought Thanos might kill all of them, there are moments when you thought Spider-Man might be able to get the gauntlet of Thanos' hands. Because even though I'd have never guessed it, Mantis proved to be Thanos' greatest weakness in the entire film. And while this was a great fight scene and you felt like you couldn't even afford to blink, the main reason I liked it so much was because the emotional roller coaster it sent me on in the climax. I and basically everyone thought we were going to witness Iron Man's death. And this was an idea I'd kind of come to terms with before the film, so I accepted his fate and then he didn't die. My heart genuinely stopped for a second and it was a huge turning point in the events of the film. Number 9, Scarlet Witch's insane power set is insane. This film shows that Scarlet Witch is by far the most powerful Avenger. She saves Vision in the fight scene at the start. She saves all of the Avengers in Wakanda from the rolling war machine things that were gonna crush them. But that's nothing for she her. She destroys an Infinity Stone while holding off Thanos who has five Infinity Stones at the same time. And to remain on topic about Scarlet Witch's destruction of the Mind Stone, Thanos' use of the Time Stone immediately afterwards is number 8. Because while it was so obviously in front of us that he was going to do that, I wouldn't have seen it coming from a mile away. I would just sat there like, wait, she's destroyed the Mind Stone, what's gonna happen? Oh my god, he's got the Time Stone! I'm assuming 90% of people saw it coming, but for me it created a huge, oh yeah, moment. And I like that, so it makes the list. On to number 7, being the character pairings we never knew we needed, but we totally did. There are so many I don't even know where to start, but I guess my go-to would be Thor and Rocket. Or should I say... Rabbit. Four Groot and Rabbit make such a good combination, and I fully expect Four to be in Guardians 3 if he's alive for it. Another great combination was Iron Man and Star Lord because, you know, two people with big egos put in a situation where they have to work together. It's always gonna be fun. And while there was only a short scene with the two of them, Bucky and Rocket also made quite an iconic duo. And I guess the final notable mention would be Star Lord and Four because all the other Guardians were in awe of Four's strength and magnitude. And it made Star Lord feel so weak and feeble, and it just, yeah, I found that so funny. I couldn't even tell you all the great combinations. There are simply too many. But that was definitely one of the highlights of the film. Which takes us to number six, Groot saving Thor's life. Because similarly to Iron Man, Thor was a character I was expecting might die. And at this moment in time, he had just taken the full blast of the sun to create the only weapon that might be able to defeat Thanos. And Groot had just been a typical teenager so far, not really done anything of note, and had just been playing on his video game all film. Comes of age in this scene. He sees Thor's life's on the line, takes on the heat of the axe, and cuts off his own arm to be used as a handle. I know his arm grows back, but he still saves Thor's life 
life. And after that, he's not really an immature teen anymore and quite seriously helps the Avengers take on the aliens in Wakanda, making the scene where he saves Thor not just an important, but all-round great scene. And while it was great, it wasn't shocking. No one thought Thor was gonna die there. You know what was shocking? Black Panther's death, and that's number five. No one thought Black Panther would die. Except people who've read the comics. Maybe that's something that happened in the comics, I don't know. People thought maybe Iron Man, maybe Cap, even Thor. They've had their trilogy. But Black Panther has just starred in the highest grossing superhero film of all time in America. And has a sequel in the works. There's no way they'll- Never mind, they killed him. It was the first major death in the long list of deaths in the end. And by far the most shocking. His last line literally implies Okoye will die as he says, This is not a place to die. And then he turns to dust. It was incredible. And somehow followed with an even sadder death because at number four we have Spider-Man's death. This wasn't just great acting from Tom Holland. This may be the saddest Marvel moment Ever. His last line was literally him apologizing for dying while he was hugging the man who was the only father figure in his life because he doesn't have a dad or an uncle. To our knowledge. I wanted to cry, and if you didn't, I don't know what to say to you. You're the people who didn't cry at the start of Up, aren't you? And while it may not have been quite as sad, the most powerful death was definitely number three. Thanos killing Gamora. This was such a powerful scene, purely due to the music and cinematography. It's all in slow motion as Thanos is doing the last thing he ever wanted to do while Gamora is struggling for her life, literally. While the slow sad music is playing, we see him throw her off the cliff and then it zooms into his sad face as a tear falls from his eye. And next thing you know, we have a shot of Gamora lying dead on the floor. That was not a death I was expecting, nor a death I wanted. And wow, I think that's enough for emotional scenes. Let's get back to awesome scenes. Number two, we have the battle in Wakanda. With all the Wakandan tribes, Black Panther, Cap, Bruce in a Hulkbuster suit, Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Vision, Black, I forgot Bucky. And eventually, four Rocket and Groot all fighting made for one of the best Marvel fight scenes Ever. And there were so many great moments in this battle. One of the best scenes was the fight between Scarlet Witch, Okoye, Black Widow, and that evil woman who, according to Wikia, is called Proxima Midnight. I think. That was an awesome girl power fight scene. Never say girl power again. But the best bit, in my opinion, was Four's arrival in Wakanda. Just as the fight was starting to turn against them, Four arrives wielding Stormbreaker, and hope is restored. And Four is as good as unstoppable with that axe. Well, you know, except it doesn't kill Thanos. Which leads us perfectly to number one. The ending. Because as you know, everyone dies in the end. Or oh, half the people die in the end. And it's just done marvellously and is the perfect ending to the film. Thanos takes out all the Avengers as they charge at him one by one in slow motion as the Avengers theme plays at a slow tempo in the background. Meanwhile, everyone's on the edge of their seats wondering what can stop him from getting to Vision. But in the end, no one does. Thor has one last strike at him with Stormbreaker giving us hope there might be a happy ending. But there isn't. And this is why I think it'll go down as one of the most iconic endings to a film ever. Marvel are basically known for never killing off their heroes. So how refreshing is it to have a film where the bad guy wins? And while the majority of the deaths presumably aren't permanent, they still killed off Heimdall, Loki, Gamora, and Vision all in the one film. And that's bold. To add to that, we get to see deaths of characters would presumably otherwise never get to see a death scene of. Because let's be real, they're never going to kill off Black Panther or Spider-Man again. And the film ends with Thanos resting and looking out the sunset after winning. Credits roll and all Audiences don't know what to think. Expectations have been blown out of the water. And this film is now my favorite Marvel film ever, and maybe even my favorite film ever because of this ending. It was unbelievable, and I just can't wait for Ant Man and the Wasp to see what happens next. That's genuinely their next film. Like, how on earth do you follow up Infinity War with Ant Man and the Wasp? Like, Ant Man's a good film, don't get me wrong, but like, is it gonna be a prequel or something? Anyway, that is all for this video. I've spent about five straight days making this video, and my computer crashed while making it, so. It's not really my fault, it's late. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to leave a like. You can watch another review video by clicking here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking here. You can check out my other social medias, including Twitter and Instagram, by click- well, by, by checking them out in the description. Clicking there is gonna do nothing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Best Marvel film ever.